So in this example, guys, we see a nice little beautiful radical, right? Um, so if we want to be able to identify the domain here, basically what we want to you know, look at of this is, is saying, all right, I know I can only take the square root of positive numbers. So I know my domain is being restricted for positive values. So just like I had on the notes, which if you haven't already started writing down, and make sure you guys have that written down, I want the radicand to be greater than or equal to 0. So I have 3 minus 6x greater than or equal to 0. Right? Now there's a couple different ways. You could add the 6 to the other side if you wanted to. Or you could use inverse operations. Just remember, if you're going to use inverse operations, when you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to flip the sign. Okay, if you just would have added the number to the other side. Wait a minute now. So you write it out and then you just find out what s is normal, right? Mm -hmm. You flip over when you divide by negative six. Yep. Okay. So you can see that these are exactly the same. I could just flip that around, right? And now I have x is less than or equal to one half. Now again, I asked you to write the domain using interval notation. So some of you might be able to write it from there, and that's fine. So you might be like, you know what? I'm going to draw the inequality of this for me to better make sense of this. This is saying x has to be less than or equal to 1 half. OK, well, if here's like 0, and here's 1, well, then here's 1 half. It's equal to, and it's all values that are less than. So can I draw an inequality from this graph? Sure. Negative infinity to 1 half. And I'll use brackets because 1 half is contained. Right? It's a part of the domain. Cool? Yeah, you got it. 